Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of Gazetta Dello 5. You've got myself here, Joel Bayer, Rio Ferdinand, Stephen Housen, and of course, Mr. Fabrizio Romano. Now, there's loads of news. Romano, what's going on? Some people don't like it when we call you Romano, by the way. They're like, call him by his first name. I can't help it. You're like a footballer to us. Fabrizio Romano, if you can talk to us about these rumours, Ronaldo to PSG, what is this? I don't trust these rumours, my friend, to be honest. Uh, at the moment, eh, I don't trust these rumours. <laughs> to, to be 100% honest with you, then never say never. I repeat always, after last summer, everything can happen, but as of today, I don't trust these rumours. I'm told that Cristiano and Jorge Mendes, his agent, they are not in negotiation with any other club today. Uh, they are not planning for any change with my United plan they had last summer. So at the moment, seems everything quiet. And also for PSG, I expect them to do something different, not to go for another, let me say, legendary top, but not so young player after signing Leo Messi. They want to go for something new. They want to go for something fresh. And so I don't see Paris Saint-Germain signing Cristiano at the moment. Well, what about Pochettino to Man United? Um, I don't know. Why, why, why are you making faces for, Steve? Go on, go on, take over, Steve. Go on, talk to me. Right. I think this is going to happen, and I'm going to throw up when it does. <laughs> this isn't the answer. Pochettino is not the answer. The guy came third in a two-horse race in England, and he comes second in a one-horse race in France. This isn't the guy that gets us over the line. But he's an option, eh? He's a serious option, Steve. He's a serious option All right, for United. Cool. So Brendan Rodgers, if that's the game we're playing. Like I said, I think, it, I think it'll happen. I really do think it'll happen. And people will be like, oh, what are you going to say when he comes? But exactly the same thing I'm saying now. I'll support him, but I don't want him. No, let me say that it's not done. There is still nothing agreed or done. Also, because my United will decide, like in April, in March, in April, not on, not now, not in February. They will take some time. It also depends on what happens with him, Pochettino and PSG in Champions League with Real Madrid and in the World Champions League campaign. But Pochettino and Eric Ten Hag are the two big names they have in the list. Uh, also, what happened with Overmars maybe could change the future of Ten Hag. He was 100% involved in the project with Ajax, but now with Overmars leaving the club. Maybe it could be could have a big impact on Eric and Hag's future. So I would keep both names as top of the list for Man United. We can't say that there are also other names on the list because it's still an open race. But Pochettino and Ten Hag are the two names that are the big favorites to, to become the new Man United manager in the summer. Rio, um, I know that you think highly of Poch. Obviously, we have the statistics there with uh, his record versus the three previous PSG managers. Um, you got here 68% is Poch, Tuchel was at 75%, Emery was at 76%, and uh, Blanc was at 72%. Do you think it hasn't worked out for him at PSG, or do you reckon it's too soon? What's going on over there, from, from what you think? Well, this is his first full season, and I think it's, um, he will be judged, he'll live and die by this. I think the Champions League is of huge importance to PSG. Mm -hmm. You could win the league for the next three years, but do very poorly in the Champions League and you'll be judged based on what you've done in the Champions League. Because like Steve said, I think that the league in um, in the in the French League is almost a given to go to, to Paris Saint-Germain at times. Um, but he's got to do well in the Champions League. And if he doesn't, I don't, I don't think he'll, he'll be afforded the time. Um, my, my big question to you, Fab, is, is this uncertainty around the manager of Man United still, um, is that going to have an effect in the summer? Uh, or preparing for the summer in the transfer window? In my opinion, yes. In my opinion, yes. It will It will always have... An, and when you are in this kind of situation, there is always an effect. Uh, for example, it had an effect on the January window because Man United decided not to spend money on players like Zakaria or Bubakar Kamara to save part of the budget for the new manager and to decide with the new manager who are the players they want to trust for the coming years. So it already had an impact on January window and it will have a huge impact on the summer window. Uh, it will take some time, and it means that um, also for, pre for for players' future, like Paul Pogba, it's not going to be easy to communicate their final decision in, in February, March. As we always say here, I expect Pogba to decide at the end of the season, also because they want to see what's next, who is the new face of the project, what kind of project we have. So it's going to have a huge impact on players that are already made United, on new signings, on the process, but also had a huge impact on, on January window. Mm. Oh, man. So... Also, so if we're going to stick it with Man United, um, I've been looking at Jesse Lingard's relationship with Ragnick. Now, I'm not very sure what's going on. Did he get some time off? Did he not? Now it looks like he's going to be leaving for free. Fab, what's the business that's gone on here? 
No, he will leave for free. It's a really strange story. It's a really strange story because uh, at the beginning of the window, first week of January, Man United were open to let him go, but Lingard was not convinced to leave the club. As Ragnik said, it's the truth. So they were open to negotiate maybe with Newcastle to try to find a way. But the player was not convinced. He wanted to stay till the end of the season and then decide uh, what he wants to do as free agent. Then in the final week of the window, and in particular on deadline day, he was desperate to leave and to join Newcastle. But Man United, because of Greenwood's story, uh, they needed uh, to keep just Lingard for the second part of the season. This is why they told him, you stay here, you're not leaving. So it's not an easy situation. It was a crazy January uh, because he changed his mind. But at the same point, I still see uh, Jesse Lingard leaving the club as free agent in the summer. Uh, West Ham will be there. Newcastle will be there again. Let's see if they will be in the Premier League, but they will push again for Jesse Lingard. And then we keep an eye again on Tottenham because um, the director of football, he's Italian, Fabio Paratici, he loves to move on free agents and so it could be an opportunity. Um, Steve Rio, I'll start off with you, Steve. When you look on the outside and you see this, I told the manager this and he said this and this is what's been going on. What's your thoughts from a fan's perspective when you hear that, when you hear this? I'm going to believe the manager pretty much every instance in these, I think. I don't think Ragnick's here for any sort of PR or damage limitation purposes. I think when he's asked a question, he answers it fairly honestly, from what I can see. Um, and I don't think he's here to play games. I'm not always 100% sure that players and, and agents uh, are not playing games while they're here. Um, with Jesse, it seemed quite obvious that he could go at the start of the window, Ralph said he could, so I don't know what happened, whether it was Ralph changed his mind or the board changed their mind. United seemed to want some pretty hefty fees um, for him to go to Newcastle. I guess you're entitled to do whatever you're entitled to do with the player under contract. Um, I just hope he doesn't become more of a handful than he needs to be for the last six months. But we've got a lot of players that will be moved on, not necessarily need moving on, but will be moved on. You've got Phil Jones, who couldn't manage to secure himself alone. You've got Pogba who now looks like he's going to walk out the door. You've got Lingard who's definitely going to be walking out the door. It's still a lot of upheaval. Um, and while we don't know who our manager is going to be um, in the next six months. So, you know, the, the settling down period for Manchester United never seems to happen. And, and I think you've got to have a settled period before you can start moving forward. Rio, when you look at it from the outside, what do you think? You know, you've got a piece of heart with this club. Like, what does it make you think? It's just a, it's, it's very different to our time, isn't it? Like you, you look at, at a club like Man United, and it was never really like the manager says something in the media, and then the player comes out and goes, "Well, no, he didn't say that. I didn't say this." It's it's just it's it's it's, it's very different. Um, I think there's frustration on the side of Jesse Lingard, which I understand. Mm -hmm. I can understand his frustrations. He he wants to leave, but from what Ralph Ranyat's saying is that we, he was allowed to leave at the beginning of the window. And Jesse and his team, who had decided in his future, decided that he wanted to stay and see out his contract. Something seems to have changed during the transfer window that suggested that Jesse now wanted to leave. And the timing of it didn't suit Man United. And mm -hmm. then at that point, Man United are well within their rights to retain the player. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about picking the right times as a player and the people that look after you as a player is getting the timing right as to when you try and leave a football club. Now, listen... I agree with Roy Keane. I think he should have left when he went to, when he went to West Ham. You have that good moment with West Ham. That was the time to leave. You like, and I've said it, I don't want to keep sounding like a broken record because we mentioned it a few times. But it is a big story. It's Man United. Mm -hmm. But for his sake as a player, that was the perfect moment to leave. And I understand he's got an attachment to Man United. He's been brought up at the football club. But sometimes you've got to be a bit selfish and think about yourself. Are you wanting to propel your career on or are you going to stagnate at the club? Now, he may have been promised by Ligon Solskjaer of more minutes. We don't know the detail. Um, but whatever happened, it hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. Do you, Fab, it's, it's probably very obvious that in Man United's position, the Greenwood situation has stopped him from going out. Do you think he has a chance of potentially playing a little bit more to the end of the season and then potentially staying on at Man United? I think playing, yes, but I don't see him staying at Man United for the future. Uh, that never seen him in football, but I don't see him staying. Also because he knows that he needs something fresh, as Rio was saying. Uh, it's time for him to, to, to change, to try something new, as he did with, with West Ham, and it was working in a fantastic way. So this will be the mission for just Lingard, and I think he will have some chances, for sure, in the second part of the season. Man United will be also in Champions League, so many competitions, many opportunities, but at the same point, I don't see him staying long-term at United. 
Uh, moving on to Roy Keane to Sunderland. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Do you reckon? Do you reckon it's a great move for Roy Keane? First of all, Fab, and uh, I know that you're not you're not like a football pundit here, like Rio. But how do you reckon he's gonna he's gonna do at Sunderland? Ah, if you want my personal opinion, I think it's a good opportunity. I'm told that they are in conversation, in advanced conversation. is not 100% decided yet, but I think it's a good opportunity for for him to try something um, different, uh, to, to try something fresh also, and also for Sunderland. I think it's a good appointment. Okay, maybe not what they were expecting, the fans were expecting, but I'm always in favour of this kind of situation. This is my, my mentality. So my my idea is to to see him and to, to to see this opportunity let's see if it will happen because it's not done yet but i think it's a good one so i really i really hope the best for him and i think it's a good opportunity fab um what have you what have you seen that's going on in the, the football world at the moment as bubbling transfer wise the last one um, was a few minutes ago before we were starting to record was about Niklas Schule, the centre-back of Bayern that is joining Borussia Dortmund. It's official. They are incredible in Bundesliga. They do the transfer window of summer. They start in February, in March. And so it's already official. Niklas Schule joins Borussia Dortmund. And I'm really curious to see what happens with Christensen because Christensen, from what I'm told, has huge chances to leave Chelsea as free agent in the summer and Bayern and interested in him to replace Niklas Sule. Also, Barcelona are interested in him. So keep an eye on Christensen. Rudiger's situation is not decided yet. So I think before jumping into summer window will be so important to, have to, to see what happens with free agents because we mentioned Sule, Christensen, Rudiger, but how many we have? Ousmane Dembélé will be another one who will have many clubs trying to sign him in Premier League and Paris Saint-Germain too. Uh, we have Paolo Dybala. He will have a meeting with Juventus in the coming days to decide his future, but his contract is apparent in June 2022, so in a few months. And is a is an interesting situation also Paolo Dybala. Of course, we have Kylian Mbappé. Yesterday he had an interview saying, I'm not signing with Real Madrid right now. But Real Madrid are in the process to sign Kylian Mbappé. They want to sign Kylian Mbappé and they will push again to sign Kylian Mbappé. So I think free agents is, is the real deal at the moment for, for the market because we have many, many players, but also not top stars, but very good players like Frank Kessi with AC Milan, Marcelo Brozovic with Inter. Many players out of contract could be interesting opportunities for important clubs. Hmm. Well, Aubameyang didn't leave on a free... He left for free, but it wasn't a... Free contract. Mm, yeah. That's a disappointing one for me. I saw him uh, debut, and he looks like he's back on form. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Steve, did you did you ever want Antonio Conte at Man United? <laughs> Shut up, Joe. <laughs> no, it's a serious question. Yeah, and that was my serious answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why not? Sometimes you've got to go with what your club represents, and sometimes you can get it wrong. And sometimes you can get it right and sometimes you can stumble on something that works. To me, Antonio Conte does not represent what I believe Manchester United represents. I think he's a short-term manager very much in the mould of Jose Mourinho, who I never wanted in the first place. And even though I think he's a, a good manager and he definitely is someone that brings success, what's the point of just chasing success at all costs? You want success in the, the manner of success that you want to achieve it, like... United fans wouldn't be happy um, with some of his styles of football. Manchester United fans wouldn't necessarily be happy with... Like, does he leave a club in a better place? No, I don't think he does. I think, he, much like Jose Mourinho, he goes with a lot of older, short-term signings. Um, he seems to fall out with the board. I just don't want him. It's just a pure gut-feeling thing. And I don't necessarily know that who is the perfect guy that takes United. But if you give me the choice of someone like Ten Hag, I think could stay here for a long term. And people will say, and I know Rio says it, I know you say it, oh, football's changed. No one's going to stay here for 25 years anymore. Okay, cool. No one thinks you can win a treble either. doesn't mean that you don't strive for those things. And I want to strive for us to have a manager that stays for a sustained period of time and builds multiple great teams. Which whether is or not that's achievable, whether or not that's possible, that's what I want. And I would rather have someone like Ten Hag, who I think has got the capability to do that, than just rinse and repeat this Chelsea model of rolling through 10 managers in 10 seasons. So so then, Fab, what do you reckon uh, Conte's feelings are towards Levy? Because I mean, I saw a quote the other day. It says, we have to pay more attention in the market to sign players. It becomes more of a <laughs> fundamental importance. That sounds like there's a little bit of a, <laughs> no, a I'm, I'm about because... to happen there, man. I'm smiling because I know Antonio since a long time and Antonio will never be happy till he has a trophy in his hands. 
So don't expect Antonio to say something in public like, okay, I'm happy with the market, I'm happy with the signings, I'm happy with the structure, till he's winning something with Tottenham. I'm 100% sure that it will be like this. It was like this at Inter, at Juventus, at Chelsea. This is Antonio Conte. He only wants to win. Stop. He doesn't care about long term or other things. Win. Stop. This is the mentality for Antonio. And so I'm told that the reaction to the market was not great because we know that the targets were different for Tottenham. They wanted Adama Traore, they wanted Luis Diaz. Kuluseski is a very good deal, so Antonio is happy with him, but they were expecting something different. But at the same point, Antonio is a fighter, so he's together with the team, he's together with the club. He expects an important summer for Tottenham, so the real mission will be in the summer for Spurs to rebuild with Antonio Conte. But at the end, he's happy with the atmosphere he feels into the club, I'm told, into the dressing room too. Look at the words from the, the last interview of Harry Kane. It was two days ago. He said with Antonio, the mentality into the dressing room has completely changed it. I can see a different kind of approach, a different kind of mentality. Thanks to Antonio Conte, he's been brilliant. And it's Harry Kane. He's not a normal, a normal player. The same player that eight months ago was desperate to leave the club. Now seems completely different situation. So he's already helping to build a new mentality. They will need to help him to build a new team in the summer, and they will do it. Of course, playing Champions League football will be key for Tottenham, and they will fight for it. But I'm sure that Antonio will be the right man for Spurs. I love him. I'm not with Steve on this point. Mm -hmm. I love Antonio Conte. Fab, you mentioned Harry Kane there, who's the captain, or he's the talisman of this team, top goal scorer, huge importance to, to Spurs and their fan base. After the summer he had, this connection with the club, it seemed, does he now stay with his relationship blossoming with Conte in this summer? I think Champions League football will be key to understand if Kane will stay or not. But I think they have huge chances to keep the player at the club. I'm sure that Tottenham will try to offer him a new contract in the coming months. They will try and try again. They wanted to offer him a new deal also last summer, but Harry Kane was not open to discuss. Now the feeling seems completely different. So I'm sure that they have good chances to do it. Uh, I'm not saying that Kane is 100% staying because it depends also on Champions League football. But it depends also on how they will build Tottenham for the future. Uh, what kind of summer they want to, to show on, on the transfer market, so with new signings. So I think they have good chances to keep the player at the club. I'm sure there will be many clubs interested, but Tottenham will fight with Conte to keep the player at the club and they have good chances. Looking at another uh, Premier League club, West Ham. Now, for me, it's interesting. I mean, David Moyes is working miracles out there, man. Uh, he comes out and he says, we probably made three record transfer bids in this January transfer window. Uh, the board has been brilliant. Are we going to see some good signings for them in the summer? Because they look like they're close, but then I still feel like they won't get top four. You know, what's your thoughts? Go on, Rio. I think their biggest thing in this next window is keeping Declan Rice. If they keep Declan Rice, and I think they'll have an opportunity to bring others into the club. But what if he goes, it's going to be difficult to convince the likes of potentially a Rafinha or Calvin Phillips to come to West Ham, I believe. I don't know what you think, Fab. I agree with you. And I think Declan Rice is the key point, 100%. But I would be confident on, on West Ham position because many clubs are interested in Declan Rice. We can mention United, City, Chelsea. It's a very open race. And the prices more than 90, 95 million. Eh? So it's going to be a big fight for the club rise, but for big money. So let's see if they will be able to keep the player at the club, but they want big money for him. And to answer your question, Joel, I'm sure that they will do a really good summer on West Ham side because it's true that they make important, they made important proposals in January. They wanted Darwin Nunez from Benfica, 50 million euros. They wanted Rafinha from Leeds, also turned down by Leeds, but it was really complicated to sign these kind of players in January. But I appreciate the strategy to say, okay, uh, instead of wasting money on our second or third choice, it's better to wait for a few months and then sign the players we want. So the strategy, in my opinion, is very good. They're always back in the manager because they're always together with Moyes in every decision they do. And so I'm sure in the summer they will be ready to try for top players. Of course, Champions League football will make the difference as for Tottenham, same for West Ham. But it will be a very good summer for West Ham, I'm sure. Could West Ham cash in on Declan Rice? There's a lot of bargains going around. Maybe like use that Declan Rice ninety five hundred million to to refinance uh, or retooling of of the squad. Maybe I think it would be an opportunity. Yes, I think it would be an opportunity. But I'm also sure that they will fight to keep the player hundred percent. This is what they showed in the last few years when Chelsea wanted him with Frank Lampard in two thousand and twenty. They made an important proposal. It was around sixty million, and they were not open to negotiate. Last summer, they were absolutely convinced to keep the player at the club. So I'm sure that they will fight. But then at the end, if you have 
100 million euros on the table for a midfielder, fantastic player. But in my opinion, yeah, accepting is never a bad idea. <laughs> Steve now thinks he's going United. Uh, Fab, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Fab, for your time. Uh, you know, it's always great to catch up. Nice. And please let us know uh, what you guys want us to talk about as well in the comments. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow us all on socials. I know you're all following Fab already, but if you're not, make sure you check him out as well. And we'll be back next week on Gazetta Dello 5. Thanks, guys. Peace. Ciao, guys.